So I'm Dr. Stefana Pescher, the country doc here in North Stonington. And tonight we have a special guest for our latest installment of our medical cannabis series, educational seminars. We have Mark Bronstein, a medical cannabis advocate with us tonight, and we're very excited to hear from him um, and to share in the learning. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. I'll introduce myself um, a little more in depth. I've been a medical marijuana patient since my injury in 1990, before it was legalized. Uh, in 1997, uh, we had the referendum in California, which was November 96, no, right, November 96. And that changed everything. The tide completely changed, but it took a lot of extra paddling on many people's part. And I was one of those paddlers early on. In January 97, um, Barry McCaffrey, who was the drug czar at the time, he came out with a statement, there's not a shred of evidence for medical, for marijuana's use for medicine. And I was very, very upset about that because I had been using it for those seven years as my only medication, by the way. I wasn't using any pharmaceutical drugs, and I still don't. I'm a paraplegic from spinal cord injury. Um, wow. So I wrote him a letter, and Barry McCaffrey, the drug czar, addressed it to him in Washington, D.C. And then I took that same letter, and I removed the salutation, Dear General McCaffrey, and I sent it to the Hartford Courant. And so in January 1997, remember, this is 20 years ago. Things were a little bit you know, different then, right? They published my editorial as the front page of the Sunday editorial section. Right? With a beautiful illustration, which people to this, not to this day, but for several years thereafter, they remembered the illustration. Um, it shows a medicine cabinet with the typical you know, pharmaceutical medicines in it, but there's also a cannabis leaf. And in the mirror of the medicine cabinet, you see a reflection of the window, and there's two policemen tapping on the window there. Okay. So this was my come out, I, you know, come out of the closet, so to speak. Um, and everything since then has been uh, a lot of fun, I must have to say. A lot of times, you know, at that time, people were very, very um, apprehensive for my own personal safety. I'd be fired from my job, I'd be evicted from my apartment, nothing happened bad. If anything, you know, I never had any um, knocking on my door from the police. I had knocking on my door by the news media. I was on TV every e um, evening news and, and thereafter. Um, so now that it's legal, I've lost all of my notoriety. <laughs> <laughs> but it took a long time to get to that. Just as an instance, I'm going to go very briefly about myself, and then we'll go into the actual subject at hand. Um, so I, in 1997, this was in March, um, we had the first new um, medical marijuana bill presented in the um, state of Connecticut. There were two doctors who testified and two patients. I was one of those two patients. And uh, nothing happened. It, it, it didn't go out of the committee, which was the uh, public health committee at the time. Uh, no, it was the judiciary committee, which is the most important committee of all the legislative committees. Um, the bill didn't come up again for another four years. In 2001, I was the only patient who testified. came up again in 2003. I was one of two patients. In 2004, I again was the same two patients once again, myself included, who testified. 2005, I was the only patient who testified. But each time, every year that the bill came up, there were more and more other people testifying, more and more doctors, more and more uh, health caregivers of other you know, modalities. But to actually say that you're using it, that was the clincher. You have to be you know, a patient to say that. Doctors couldn't say that, that's for sure. Okay. Um, okay. 2007, five patients, and I was one of the five. So now we're starting to get this little bankroll going. Right? Um, 2011, six patients testified, among many other people. Uh, a lot of the times it was caregivers for patients who couldn't attend, so the caregivers came and testified on their behalf. And of course, there are many people who just do write in. You don't have to appear in person. You could also just give written testimony. Well, after doing this for seven times, appearing, you know, taking a day off from work, seven times, I decided the next time it was coming up for passage, you know, for um, for a vote, 2002, it looked pretty certain it was going to pass. And so I decided I'm going to take the day off. <laughs> I'm going to take you know the year off rather, 
and I didn't appear in person. I just gave a written testimony, and it finally passed. Okay. Wow. So anyway, so I'm one of the. I have to say, there were many, many movers of that, but as far as a patient, I was the prime mover as far as patients go, and the media loved that because I would then come to my home and I'd show them my stash. And it, it helped. You know, I was employed by Connecticut College at the time. It helped to be employed by a liberal arts college. Because <laughs> I was not, I was also living in faculty housing of the college, right? <laughs> and admitting to the world, I'm using marijuana on college property and nothing happened to me. All right? So um, here we are. It's all legal as can be for patients and soon enough you know, for everyone. You know? It took a lot. And so, um, you know, thank you for coming. And if you all want to bow down in front of me and thank me, you can do so. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. So um, the subject at hand is basically how to smoke pot, but it's not presented in that way. There's an article in the, um, if you don't have one yet, um, you can take one of those issues there, um, Spirit of Change. It was in a year ago. Uh, I had written a much longer article which was published in the Medical Marijuana Magazine about uh, seven years earlier. And then I rewrote it, condensed it, and updated it, and it came out in the Holistic Health Magazine. This is how it's become so mainstream. This is a um, Holistic Health Magazine. It's a freebie. It's given away in the yoga centers and uh, health and stores throughout New England, just only as far as northern Connecticut, not down this far south. So that's why most of you maybe have not seen that. Um, so that's the subject of the article today is um, like first aid for marijuana smokers and how to reduce the health risks of smoking marijuana. In other words, how to smoke pot. Okay. <laughs> um, how many here still are using the bud form, as they call it in the dispensaries? You know, we used to call it, no, we used to call it bud, it's called flower. How many here are still using it in the flower form? One, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, methods. four. Okay. Sorry. I use that along with several other methods. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's one of several. And you? Several, two. Okay. That's the only way I use it. All right. I'm a diehard. I mean, I, I'm always honest about this to the media, too, at the time. The lobbyists were not very happy when I would tell them how, you know, my use is medicinal for below the waist That's a paraplegic but recreational for above the waist. Right? <laughs> if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't use it. I would yeah. use all the pharmaceutical drugs that turn people into zombies. Right? Oh, but obviously, yeah. I enjoy the high. So I've always, and I've been a pothead, or whatever you want to call it, since I was 16 years old. I'm now 66. 50 years later, I'm not going to change. I'm too old to change. I tried, I tried vaping, and I tried the oral sprays and the tinctures. You know what? I don't like the high. I like the high from just smoking. So that's the way I use it. I like okay. the high from smoking. Okay. I use the vapor, the, uh, the wax, uh -huh. for my pain. Okay. But it does give you a high. Yeah. But it relaxes my muscles so that I can tolerate the, because I have no rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. And it's irritating and it's been breaking off because I have deterioration of the bones. So it just breaks off and, and it just floats around there. And it, when it does break off, it's, the pain is horrendous. Mm -hmm. So, it reduces the pain, but doesn't yeah. eliminate it. It doesn't eliminate it. Right. It's so that I can tolerate it. Yes. That's how I've heard usually when it's yeah. for just specifically pain relief. Yeah. Right. Okay. In my case, it's also for the alleviation of the spasms. Spasms yeah. are the involuntary movement of muscles where I don't have voluntary movement. And I do walk, and when I have spasms, my feet start spasming, pushing out of the leg brace and pushing me in the opposite direction of when I'm walking forward. Yeah. So I do need to medicate if I'm going to walk, and so yeah. But you know, I I like the high too. Yeah. I only smoke once every other day. I get my spasms back after almost three days of non-medication. So I just medicate once every two days just to keep it under control. Okay. And because the high is so much more pleasant if you space it out. 
I smoke every day, you don't get high anymore. I smoke every other day, I get high. That's how it works. And you know, I think most people, they smoke more than once in a day, they're not going to get it high the second time that same day. So for me, if I don't need to, it, to medicate the spasms, you know, I'll just keep it down to where the high is still enjoyable. But anyway, all right, so I do smoke still. The old fashioned way too. I don't do vaping, but you know, um, I'm interested in hearing people's experiences when we get to that subject. Okay. Um, smoking of anything poses risks. I mean, all drugs pose risks. Pharmaceutical or medicinal, you know, herbal, whether it's legal or illegal, all drugs pose risk. The effects that we seek in them are just many of the effects. The other ones we don't see, we call side effects. But really, Technically, the effect we seek is another one of the many side effects. Okay. So um, the question is, you know, the balance of what we want and what we don't want. And in the case of smoking, what's good about it is it's immediate. I mean, you can titrate it, you know, exactly within two minutes if you've had enough. Um, and I've tried the tinctures and the oral sprays. It takes it about an hour for it to, to take did. effect. Right? Really? Just like <coughs> eating an edible, medical edible, yeah. same thing, an hour, hour and a half. Um, you don't know if you've had enough, you don't know if you've taken too much, you know. When we're smoking, you know pretty immediately. That's why people never, that's why you can't overdose on marijuana if you smoke it. Because you're going to fall asleep before you've smoked enough mm -hmm. to do yourself in. But you can eat too much in some way, any of the consumables, you can, you can overdose. And... That, to me, is a reason to not use those as well. But anyway, so I do smoke, and I, I do smoke the old-fashioned way, but there's ways of reducing the risk of smoking. And maybe those of you who don't smoke, whether it's vaping or smoking, you might try smoking after, a, you know, after today. I'll give you the pointers on that. Okay. Um, first thing is, most important, if you leave with nothing else, this is the most important thing. Do not... Hold your breath. You inhale, you exhale, just like you're normally breathing. People who smoke tobacco do the same. They don't inhale and hold their breath like, you know, and then, ah. if they did, they'd all be dead by now. <laughs> because there'd be so much damage to their lungs going on, right? The only reason people who smoke marijuana don't get cancer because relatively to tobacco, you're only taking a little bit, right? You're not smoking all day long every day. You're smoking a little bit, and that's it. Um, so the, you know, any smoke is harmful, cannabis included. But there's been no documented cases of lung cancer from cannabis. By, by which I mean, if you look at people who, I'm 66, I'm from the 60s. I was a hippie 60s, you know, smoking marijuana. And if you look at those people, who have only smoked marijuana all their lives, and only recreationally, meaning never more than once a day, there's no cancer that's traced to that. Yeah, okay. that's true. Right? Now, people who smoke cigarettes and in cannabis, they'll have cancer. Cannabis won't give you emph emphysema, the way tobacco does, but cannabis can give you bronchitis, the way tobacco does. So there is a risk of that. That's if you smoke too much. What does that mean? Well, if the signs would be to start coughing either while you're smoking, that means you've smoked too much at the time, or you're coughing after you've smoked, then you've smoked too much within the 24 hour period. So that's a good sign right there that you're smoking too much and you're also smoking the wrong way, which means holding your breath. This has been scientifically studied in California. Dr. Tajian is well known for such studies. Just inhale and exhale and try it next time on your own. Do your normal way of holding your breath and, you know, and, and slowly exhaling. You know, just take the same amount of the same quality of marijuana, the same quantity, try it your old way one night, one day, whatever. Wait twenty four hours, clean out, try it the new way, and you will get the same effect. The difference on your lungs is the cannabinoids are oil soluble. So they immediately coat the cilia of your lungs and immediately absorb. And once those cilia are coated, there's no further absorption going on. So if you hold it in, all you're then doing is allowing the tars and the particulate, the, um, which is the, the ash, 
to stick in your lungs all the longer. And that's what you don't want hanging around in there. So you want to be able to just coat the cilia and get it out. Okay? And if you happen to be with uh, someone with whom you're intimate, you can do what I call smoke kissing, right? Or kiss smoking, it's like, you know, exhale into their breaths, and it works too, <laughs> okay? So anyway, the point is, don't hold your breath. And you will find that you any irritation to your lungs or your throat that occurred before will no longer be occurring. And so right there, you know, if you if you leave right now, and in fact you can because you've got the articles in hand that it's basically the subject of, of the rest of the talk, you know, um, you're, you're coming out ahead. Okay. Okay. So the other bad thing about smoking, it's not just because cannabis is smoked form, but is what people use to light the cannabis with, the ignition system, right? The match or the lighter. And a lot of times, people never really give any recognition to that. You can take out, uh, there's a magazine, that, the newspaper there. Thank you. The article, uh, the subject that I'm talking right now is in, in there too. Okay. Um, so, people fail to realize when you strike a match or you light that you know, benzene lighter, you're in the butane lighter, you're inhaling the fumes of the sulfur tip of a match or the butane exhaust, which is far more carcinogenic, far more toxic than any herb would be, cannabis included or anything, or even tobacco. So you want to avoid that, okay? and. The worst thing you can do is like, I mean, crack addicts, for instance, their teeth are rotted, their diseases, their gums are diseased. They've got all kinds of cancers going on, not just in the lungs. Not just the crack, as though that were bad enough, but they take the lighter and they hold it about this far away from their mouths and they're inhaling the butane fumes. That's the worst thing going. That's worse than the, than the baking soda and the cocaine that the crack is. So you want to stay away from that. So how do you do it? Well, one thing is you can light a match. When you light it, hold it up because fumes rise. Okay? If you smell that sulfur tip from striking the match, you're smelling it, you're breathing it. So if you strike a match, you want to strike it away from you and, and then hold it up, let the sulfur tip burn down. And then when it's halfway down, then take it and light it to your joint or your pipe. Or, the best solution possible, light a candle and use toothpicks to light with. Flat toothpicks, not round. Flat will burn very easily, round won't burn as easily. And you're only applying a piece of wood, natural fiber, just like the cannabis is a natural fiber. All right? Say that again, I'm sorry. I hate flat ones, I threw them away. Well, they're only about 50 cents for a box. You can always yeah, go out and buy them. Okay. 12 cents. All right. Yeah, All right. So what I do when I, you know, the worst thing is if you're smoking a pipe and you're striking a match each time you want to inhale, that's the worst thing going. So I light a candle and I use either uh, beeswax, not um, regular um, paraffin, which is a petroleum distillate. So you don't want to be breathing that around you. Or a soy oil, okay some natural oil candle, and I use little flat toothpicks. It's you know, what I call the health food technique, okay? Um, so right there, that's two things, all right? Those are the top of the list, two out of 10, all right? Any comments about that? Um, you know, you can go home tonight and maybe try it out, right? <laughs> yeah, go buy some. Yeah, go buy some toothpicks, okay. Um, all right, so. Number three on the list. Um, okay. Now, those of us who do still smoke, what technique do you use? Do you use uh, joints with rolling paper, or do you use a pipe? Both. Okay. I usually use a pipe on the only one. Okay. Right. Yes. Around, right. You know. If you're all, if you're solo, <laughs> right. If you're solo smoking, you're going to have the half of it go up into the air if it's going to be a joint. Right. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. And any other one? Anyone else? Paper. Use vaporizing. Paper. And rolling paper. Not rolling paper. Okay. okay. I use organic rolling paper. 
Oh, what brand is that? Uh, what is um, the pure hemp rolls. I found that the hemp's don't burn very well. Well, the or you got to get the organic ones. If they're yeah. the dark shaded ones, they're not good. Oh, they don't the light ones. They, burn. they burn. Oh, real nice. nice. Okay. All right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I don't like the dark, oh, right. the regular hemp ones, but they got some organic ones okay. that are. They, they sell them. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll save them for me. Then, they go very fast. Uh -huh. where I live. Okay. Well, uh, joints or uh, what they call them pre rolls in the dispensary, right? Pre rolls are good, and because you're aerating today, <coughs> because the air is coming not from from the tip where it's burning, but it's coming along the side of the joint itself. So you're aerating it more, so it's not just smoke, but it's smoke and the air. All right, so it goes down a lot easier, as opposed to a pipe, where you really just pure smoke. There's not that aeration going on. Um, but on the other hand, when you use rolling paper, you're then inhaling the paper. There's nothing medicinal about that. It's just added burden on your lungs. That's okay. why I like Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, because I, I, I don't know how to roll. I always have to wait for Right. All right. <laughs> okay. Your character, then, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> right. I am, uh, All right. Yeah, can you over a roll? All right. You know, so. Okay. Um, now, sometimes people put filter tips on the joint. There's good and bad with that. You are indeed filtering out most of the, the particulate matter, the ash, some of the tar, but you're also filtering out the cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. So you end up really smoking more than you would otherwise. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a balance <laughs> lost there. So for that reason, I would not recommend filter tips. All right. What does work very well are what are called just um, smoking tips. They're actually just hollow. They sell them commercially. They're used very widely in Europe when people smoke cannabis in Europe. Um, just a hollow tip. You can buy them commercially, you, know, you can make them yourself by just using like the, the cardboard from rolling paper or the cardboard from the, the match, um, the book of matches. You roll it into a, a, a roll, just like the joint, put it in the tip of the joint. Or use a cigarette um, holder. Okay. It gives you that added filtration of the air in that as well. It's also holding it away from your mouth so there's not the possibility of burning your lips, but worst of all is if you're lighting it, the farther away it is what you're lighting from you, the less you're going to be inhaling the fume from the match or the, the lighter. So that's an extra reason for using the, the um, cigarette holders, okay? Similar to that is the, is the tips. Now here's what I do. I don't use joints usually. You can buy straws. Most straws in the supermarket, all of them in fact, are all plastic. You gotta go to the health food store, you buy paper straws. And what I do is, I'm gonna pass this around so you can see it's hollow. There's a line drawn, that's as far into the joint that this straw, cut the straws into like eighths or so. It's as far as it goes. So really, I'm only smoking it down to here, and I'm really, the whole thing, all of the cannabis is being consumed rather than being left over in, in a roach. Okay. Oh, okay. Now roaches are good because they're acting as filters. They're filtering out the particulate and the ad and the uh, tar, but also cannabinoids too. Right? But uh, there's no filter here. It's just empty space. Right? So, okay. I happen to get the paper straws from Fiddleheads Food Co-op in New London. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind wondering. of paper is this? Um, zigzag. I happen to get zigzag because my last name appears on the on the cover. <laughs> it's, um, it's the Bronstein Freire, the French company. It's Bronstein Brothers. So, and that little man with the mustache. And people oh. used to say I used to look like him. So, oh. so that's the reason I use that zigzag. So. Right. Oh, I I got it. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Okay. He showed me earlier. Yeah. All right. So. Um, I recommend if you can use joints is use that little tip on the end. It, it really uh, is farther away from you. you know. Can you get that from the? Well, you can use plastic them? ones. Just don't smoke it down to the to the straw. Okay. But just in case I do smoke it down to that, which I've never done, 
I use paper straws. Oh. And as I mentioned, I can find those in the supermarket. You're going to find them only in the health food stores. Oh, okay. okay. And it's that, they're that small so that you can get them in there. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, all right, so I see these like, aha, you know. So, <laughs> you see, so oh, you something. do? Well, then this is probably a good. It's too small. I'm, I, I'm scary. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We left you a little. And then, then my, my niece gave me a. Yeah, right. It's yeah. metal, right? Okay. And it burned All right. Said, oh, no, I can't try that. <laughs> All right. So you can use a cigarette holder, which is no different than the stem of a pipe. So why I not just use? I thought a, about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why not just use a pipe? Just, which is how I smoke. Yeah. Whether I'm with friends or whether I'm alone. Yeah, right. I, I like. Pipe. Okay. Thing about pipes is they're very short stems. Usually the ones oh, that mine is about okay. The longer the better. The is about that big, and the okay. pipe is about that big, right? Right. The longer the better. All right. You know because I don't want to burn myself. I, right. I, I worry about that. Yeah. And the reason why you want it long is the stem will trap the tar along the way. Uh -huh. That's what that gunk is that you're cleaning when you clean yeah. your pipe. That's all pure tar. There's mm -hmm. nothing good in that. The tar then captures along the way the particulate matter, the ash, but also some cannabinoids. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to smoke with a long stem pipe, smoke it lower than you so that the ash all gets caught along the stem. It's not going to come up high. Enough. And you want to get a long stem pipe, but you've got to be able to clean it, so you have to get segmented. It's the pipe I've used for 27 years. Wow. There used to be a fourth segment, but that broke. So you want to use it the length of your arm, which used to be a fourth segment for me. Yeah. Okay. Because then you're lighting it, the, the, the match, the butane lighter is far away from you. Yeah, I need one. Okay. But I want a big bone. I my grandson has a smile on his face this whole time. It's like he's, he's enjoying himself, I can tell. My, my, my grandson's saying, shh. Right. Anyway. Um, and my saying, <laughs> now, what's good about a long stem pipe okay, is it's trapping things along the way, but also any smoke is bad because not just the matter, the particulate, the tar, but also because it's hot and dry. When you're inhaling something that's hot and dry, you're drying out your mouth, your throat, your esophagus. Mm -hmm. And that, the dryness makes you more susceptible to colds and flu, and also you know, bronchitis, let's say. Also, it dries out your mouth, and that makes you more susceptible to gum disease and tooth decay. When you smoke with a long stem pipe, by the time it reaches your mouth, it's no longer hot. It's still dry, but it's no longer hot. When people smoke with my pipe for their first time, I always have to advise them, they never listen to me, just take a little, because you're not going to feel it, because it's not hot. You're not going to feel anything in your mouth, in your throat, in your lungs. <laughs> and they always take in too much, and they end up coughing it. Okay? <laughs> so very important. You don't want it to be hot, and this will cool it down. All right? So you won't be able to find wooden ones in the uh, head shops. You've got to go to an Indian import store for one of these. Head shops will have long ones, but they won't be segmented. You won't be able to clean it. You can use it maybe 20 times, and then it's clogged. You know? It's useless. They sell them as peace pipes. Okay? And maybe there's a lot of them are in the area here, you know, in the head shops here. Um, but I don't recommend those. They do sell in, in the head shops uh, metal segmented pipes. Mm -hmm. They're very short and you need about 10 segments to get this length. You can buy them by the segment to add as many as you want. But metal is very heavy and also lends a metallic taste to the smoke. So I don't like Probably it. Probably by the time you get them together, it's heavy. <laughs> right, yeah, and you get, yeah, 
It is heaven, yeah. So, so I, I really love this pipe very much. It was given to me when I first became injured. Paraplegia, a friend of mine said, oh, you wanted to bestow it on me, like a poor crippled guy. He's going to give me his favorite pipe. And I've used it for 27 years ever since. So, wow. Hmm. Anyway, OK, so pipes, next subject, number five on this, water pipes. Everyone has a mistaken notion that water pipes are good, that it moistens, like it's, what's bad about smoke? It's hot and it's dry. People think water pipes moisten the smoke. Wrong. Scientifically proven, there's no added moisture in the smoke going through a water pipe. It cools it, but it does not moisten it. Okay. Um, water pipes, in, which they call in head shops, called bongs. Well, actually, they don't call it bongs in work, but you know, once you're home, you call it a bong. Um, they're not very good for filtering out the product in the in the water. Like if you smoke with a water pipe and you dump the water, it stinks. You think, wow, that's good. It's trapped all that crap that stinks so bad. I'm glad they don't have it in my lungs. Right. It traps all the particulate matter, the ash. That's good but it also traps cannabinoids. So once again, you're using more to compensate for what's lost, so it evens out that what's the point of the water pipe, okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't recommend water pipes. And this is all, there's scientific studies. If you go, not to the um, article that's on the website that is in the link that was announcing this today, or in the published version, but if you go to my website, I've got the PDF of the article, but also I have, in addition, a PDF of the bibliography, the citations of all the scientific studies that I'm alluding to, that I'm you know, re uh, referring to. You can, and a lot of them are links to the studies themselves, either the full study or to the abstracts. Okay. So I recommend, oh, by the way, go to my website for that. And it's, my name is Mark Bronstein. So that's www. Mark, M-A-R-K, Braunstein, B-R-A-U-N, like the German company, the shavers and the juicers, you know, Braunstein, S-T-E-I-N. So it's Mark Braunstein, one word, dot org, O-R-G, short for organic, or oh, whatever else your dirty mind may <laughs> okay, and you can find the medical marijuana page from there easily enough, but if you want to go right to it, then it's slash dot medical dash marijuana, okay? And then you'll find PDFs of all the other articles I've written on the subject, and some of the articles written about me, and you will find also, the, as I mentioned, the bibliography for the citations for everything that's that article itself is, is getting its information from. So, all right. So I don't recommend water pipes. Now, the next step from water pipes is vaporizers. Twenty years ago, there were no such thing as vaporizers. You know, it's like this. you heard rumors about them. They started appearing in the marketplace you know, maybe about eighteen years ago or so, and they were really garbage. And anyone who tried them at that time, as I did, you know, you immediately threw them away and gave them up and gave up on the deal. But a lot has developed in the meantime. Now, those of you who use vaporizers, I need to hear from you because I don't use vaporizers. And I've tried them here and there. And I happen to own one that's a very inexpensive one. Uh, it's called the Flight Box. I don't really recommend it. It's cheap, so it's worth getting for that reason. All the others cost several hundreds of dollars. But um, those of you who use vaporizers, can you share your experiences? I like the uh, little vape pens that they sell yep. at the cartridges. Uh, right from the like dispensary. And yet the dispensary. Okay. Um, they have several different uh, variations. They have uh, the Indicol, the Haridol, um, all different types. And uh, they're not cheap, but they last quite a while. Uh -huh. um, okay. And there still must be some ignition process in there yep. from the battery. But, it, yep. Um, yeah, I find it smooth. I'm gonna can't wait to try it without having a whole new breath. You know, it's right. like uh, yeah. it's gonna help a lot. You know. Yeah, because we, even with vaporizers, you still can cough. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, so that's telling yeah. you there's an irritant going on right there. Yeah. Right. If you're coughing. So anyone my, else? 
Uh, I used to have a volcano bait, and it's yeah. where you, it has a plastic bag, yeah. and then the bag fills up, and then you suck all the air out of the bag. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't know how good it is. Like, it worked out very well. Yeah. You take one, and you're good for a while. Right. But I haven't even heard of that. I don't, I don't know how good it is. As Compared to, to other yeah, brands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was early on one of the models that was highly recommended early on, but many others have evolved since then. Um, so, okay, but you know, that, and that also has a temperature control. Yeah, right? yeah, so you Very can important. Move it higher or lower. Right. The thing is, they call it vaporized. It's not vapor. That's a total misnomer. All right. Um, marijuana um, combusts and burns at Fahrenheit 460. Everyone knows the title Fahrenheit 451, Ray Bradbury book filmed by Francois Truffaut. Not everyone, but many of you here. I read it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then you, and what is Fahrenheit 450? What is that? Tell me. That's the uh, burning temperature. Yeah. Of, of paper. Yeah. Right. Of books. Right. Okay. And, ma and cannabis is 460, basically the same. But in order to, for vaporizers, and it's not vapor, remember, it's, it's more like, um, like when you take a candle and you blow it out and it, this smoke yeah. comes out, it smolder is what that is, right? It's really smolder, but they couldn't really call it a smolderizer. That wouldn't have a real <laughs> ring to it, you know. Um, and the temperature for that is something between 200 and 400. And you can get that, you know, that smolder then, okay? Um, also, when, what's the ball? Volatile, volatile. Anyway, um, another word that's used in its place besides smolder, which is a little has more of a more of a commercial ring to it. Um, so the, the advantage is you're not having that high temperature applied to it. You're not having the ash formed because of that combustion process. Okay, so there's no ash being inhaled any place because there's no ash formed. It's very important. Ash is the most carcinogenic part of any smoke. It's a solid matter gets in your lungs, it stays there. It doesn't go any place after that. That's why it causes you know, cancer more than any other part of smoking tobacco, is the ash, okay? So, you know, the vaporizers are good, but you still can cough, and that's telling you it's still an irritant. So it's not a complete panacea. You know, it still needs to be taken you know, in moderation, okay? Any other brand names of vaporizers? I tried the packs before. Yeah. That's that little pen. Yeah. yeah. I've tried that one. And, it, and I, I find like there's still a lot of leftover <coughs> material in the, but in that's, the paper. Yeah. I'm, I'm not very clear on that, but the leftover is, you want it leftover because any further than that, then you're going to go into the ash, you know, content. It's well, like, if it's not run hot enough, I guess. I think okay. That's yeah. The point. And right. You can run it hot and then you can feel it. Up around your mouth, right, right, and that does not have a temperature control. It's too compact. There's, yeah, there's like a couple. The one that I have anyway has a couple settings. I think it's like a, you know, a low and a high or something. Okay. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. There's no dial, like. You know, no, okay. you have yeah. no idea what. Okay. It is. Right. Uh, and I and I've also heard too from people that have studied uh, different manufacturers of the vaporizer pens and have looked for different. Uh, impurities or other yeah. you know, harmful components mm -hmm. in there if they're manufactured inappropriately, yeah. that there's, that's also a risk. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no consumer reports on vaporizers. <laughs> yeah. I wish there were. Yeah. I mean, you can go online. And Tufts. I heard this from a guy at Tufts that had studied okay. Uh, okay. a handful of yeah. these devices. Right. There are some studies that, that are on that, but they only do a handful. Right. I understand. Yeah. I do have citation for that. Although I have to admit, of all the citations in my bibliography, the ones for vaporizers are pretty old. They were from like 10 to 15 years ago. And there are many more that are more recent that you know, I should have looked up, but I just didn't get around to it. I don't have an interest in vaporizers. I just don't like devices. I mean, I'm Mr. Natural. This is why I smoke, because I can have the herb right in front of me. I, I recognize it. I'm not doing anything. I mean, I. I I eat unprocessed food. I don't eat white flour. I don't eat white sugar. 
we eat foods the way they come in nature. The, on my plate is the way I eat them when I'm home. Okay, that's why I do cannabis the way I do because I can see it. I know exactly what's coming into me. I am indeed processing it by way of smoking it, but so is every other way that you're going to do it. Just that someone else did it for you. you know? And there's still toxic waste being produced when you're using cannabis in vapor form and you know, tinctures and in oral sprays and salves and whatever form. The number one industrial polluter in the state of Connecticut used to be Pfizer. When Pfizer used to produce their drugs in the rotten plant, they don't anymore. They do it all in China now. The rotten plant, is, the pharmaceutical manufacturing part is closed down totally. But when it was opened, it was number one industrial polluter. So they're doing polluting for us instead of us polluting it indoors, you know, with the smoke ourselves or in our home or in our car. You know, there's still pollution going on. I'd rather have the pollution right, you know, point in front of me and I'm in control. Uh, so that's, I try to keep it as natural as possible. That's my reason, my rationale is, but anyway. Okay. Um, what time is it, by the way? Someone tell me, please. Mm -hmm. 7.50. Okay. So we've got like 10, 15 minutes. Okay, good. Um, getting, we're getting close to the end here. Um, so... Next thing to seek is purity, all right? Purity and potency both. We would prefer organic. Unfortunately, in the state of Connecticut, everything that's grown in the four dispensaries is all hydro. It's all indoors, artificial lighting, filtration of the air. All the hydro is all chemical. You can do organic hydro, but it's, it's really stinky. It's usually, you know, um, manure based and you know, in other words you know, animal animal do uh, but uh, the dispensaries that any product from dispensaries is all indoor grown it's not organic it's good but it's not great artificial lighting does not compare with sunlight I get mine from the dispensary ever since the dispensary is open but before then I used to get it from a grower in Rhode Island He's a licensed grower now, but before it was legalized in Rhode Island, I used to get it with him. He would grow it outdoors and organic grown. Nothing compares. Everyone, mm -hmm. all growers acknowledge nothing compares with organic. And nothing compares with sunlight if you have enough of it you know, during the season. Um, so we're all using from dispensaries the second best. We don't have a choice as yet. Maybe the laws will be changed, or maybe it'll be legal for everyone. Maybe we'll all be able to grow in our homes, like in Massachusetts next door to us, mm -hmm. right? Indoors, I think, is legal for Massachusetts residents. There's a certain number of plants right now, okay? Um, uh, things are changing. But, uh, you know, so we're all consuming hydro grown. And you know, if you, go to a health food store and you buy the organic lettuce that's grown outdoors in soil compared to the hydro lettuce comes in this plastic container looks beautiful doesn't taste the same it looks great anything indoors greenhouse grown lettuce um, but doesn't compare right? and then obviously marijuana is the same thing yeah. well you know but I'm, I'm very appreciative of what we do get here okay mm -hmm. in the dispensaries I visited, uh, I got a tour of the uh, TheraPlant. I interviewed the CEO of it for an article of mine. And to get permission from the state of Connecticut to go there just to be admitted into the, into the facility. Wow. And, sorry? Wow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a big place. It's a huge complex. And all of the four grower facilities are still not yet up to capacity. Even though we've got 8,000 plus patients in the course of just three years, tripled every year, the dispensaries have gone from four to six. There's now seven. I think there'll be some more soon that will be opening. But we still have the same four grow labs because they're still not reaching capacity. In that. So that's, we're kind of stuck with that, you know. So, anyhow. Um, potency. That's the less, the more potent it is, the less you smoke. Whether it's yeah. CBD or CBN or THC you're seeking. Back in the old days, we used to smoke THC was two or three percent. You had to smoke two or three joints in the 60s. 
now we're getting the, the highest I've seen in dispensaries is 32% THC. It's actually THC and THCA if you really the, the fine print on the on the uh, the vials. THCA is what it's like. If it's 32%, it's 31% THCA and 1% THC. THCA is converted to THC during the ignition process, then the combustion. Okay, so they add the two together and they get you your total. Uh, so we're getting as high as 32 here. But THC and CBD and CBN are not the only factors, whether it's medicinal or recreational. There's other things going on there. There's more than 100 other cannabinoids. So everyone's you know, chasing THC. Whenever our dispensary close by, the uh, Thames Valley, they, anytime they have something they announce coming in that's gonna be more than 25 THC, you gotta put a pre-order in. <laughs> Because you know it the go last. right it doesn't last very long there right because everyone's chasing THC it's not the only factor I have found for the high now I'm only talking about for the high my favorite was a 26 THC as compared to others 28 29 30 and 32 I've tried because other things the terpenes are very important too okay but anyway um, so potency yeah we want to go for the highest potency we can whether it's CBD CBN THC the less the more potent it is the less you smoke. But in order to preserve potency, those plastic vials that you're buying them in are not ideal. They're good. No. You know, Glass. when you just go to the, when you go to Thames Valley River, Thames Valley <laughs> Alternative Relief, before you even open the door, you could smell it outside the building. Yeah. You open the door, there's a waft coming in. Where's it coming from? It's all these vials, these plastic vials, and it's even the waiting room beyond if you're smelling it, the smell's coming out, that means air is going in. That means oxidation, it turns rancid, it loses its potency. So you want to put it in a glass jar. Make sure the seal on the, on the, on the metal of the cap is a, a new jar. Um, if that seal starts to turn brittle with age, it's not going to close that top as securely. Keep it in the glass jar, you won't smell anything on the outside. Yeah. So, so based on that observation about the uh, potential for just changes in the profiles, have, do, you, do you ever have concerns about what it is you're actually getting? You know what it's labeled, but um, what you're actually getting in the end. Oh, you mean from the dispensaries? Do I have concerns? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't actually. No. I mean, it's not organic, but it's still good. It's still tested. It's tested for mold. It's tested for um, heavy metals. Okay. I mean, we're paying for something. When we, what would be street value $300 an ounce, we're paying 400 and 450 an ounce. Well, the extra $150 an ounce is basically going to part of it is all of the stringent controls that are along the way. I'm also paying for all the red tape involved in it, too. So, um, but no, I don't have that concerns. But you seem to have concerns. No, I just, it just, oh. um, no, I just, was was curious just for somebody that's kind of more of a, of a connoisseur um that cannabis connoisseur thank you i've been called worse things <laughs> like you said if you're if you're smelling it in the air yeah. and then you've obviously thought about right. you know it yeah. having changes in its chemical right. profile right oh yeah um, it, it, it loses its potency with losing age its potency, sure so you know what it was when it was tested right. and labeled do you actually know ah, what it is good point yeah. I one time bought Keef from the dispensary here. It was already half a year old. Keef, they, they call it concentrate. Yeah. All right. The date that it was harvested was already half a year old, and it was not as potent as you would expect Keef to be. It did not refrigerate it. The little plastic vial was not necessarily airtight. It's tiny yeah. little plastic, right? Wow. So you got to check the date. So when you're buying something that's on order, because, you know, pre-ordered, you know, at least it's delivered. It was just harvested. Okay. Well, anyway, you get it home, put it in the glass jar, put it in your refrigerator. Even better, put it in your <coughs> freezer. In the freezer, it'll basically last almost indefinitely. I have, I'm speaking from experience. I have some stuff that's five years old in my freezer. I date everything now. And I take it out and I try it. Yes, it's lost a bit, I can tell, because this is really good stuff. That's why I froze it. And it's not, it's, it's not the really good stuff that I remembered it was, okay? 
but it's five years old in the freezer, it's still very good. Okay? You got room in your freezer? Of course you got room in the freezer. Put it in your freezer. Take a little bit out as you need it for the week or whatever it is. Keep it in the freezer. It's the best place possible. Okay? So glass jars are frozen. All right. And I guess along those same lines, what are your thoughts around the whole labeling and strain? Oh, names? yeah. Um, well, you know, the names that we're given in the dispensary, you can go online to Leafly, it's called, and it'll tell you, you go to the state of Connecticut website there, and it'll tell you the street equivalent. Like sour diesel is a very popular one for people who are seeking the, mostly the pain relief. And it's called something else from the dispensary, but it'll tell you which one is really just sour diesel. And sometimes if you ask the, bar, the bud tenders, at the dispensary, they'll be able to tell you the street name as well. Okay, um, um, but yeah, it's very strange because it could be the same names even from the same grow lab, and it's not the same potency. Like my favorite of all was Piscay Twenty Eight THC, and now the Piscay is coming in from Theraplant. It's Twenty One. When that's on the you know available right now, it's not the same. And I tried a Biscay Twenty; and it was useless. That's right. You know, so anyway, no, we can't. <laughs> we can't even give it away to others if we don't like it, and to be legal anyway. Even that's not okay. <coughs> so anyway, what's your thought on the? Uh, I recently purchased Lexic MCH uh, hash. Uh, and hash. Yeah. What's your? What is it called in the dispensary when it's hash? It, the lexicam ch the it's okay. the, the bud is uh ck and okay the, the hash oh okay CH. yeah that's mm -hmm. the only difference in the yeah on the ordering um, okay menu. but what is your thought on the hash? i don't see when it's hash coming from the middle east yeah I've, we don't know what it's pressed in the, the resin mm -hmm. the rumors when i was in the 60s, it was, it was camel shit, but that's bull crap. You know? <laughs> camel crap, you know. I don't know what it's pressed with. There's something else going mm -hmm. on there. I don't know what the dispensaries are pressing it with. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're one last step, number 10. After you've smoked, moisten your mouth. Drink water, right? You want to re-moisten your mouth. It's going to be dry. You want to have maybe chlorophyll, which will cleanse your palate, which um, which will counteract you know, the harmful effects of smoke. Anything that's high in um, phytochem phytonutrients, especially the brassica family of plants, right? Antioxidants. You want to use that too because you smoke in some form, whether it's vaporizing or whatever. You want to be able to balance that. Just as an instance, the amount of vitamin C that's consumed. Where we're not consumed, that's just needed to counterbalance one cigarette, one tobacco cigarette, is about 25 milligrams of vitamin C. You need to eat a, an orange. For every orange that's smoked of cigarette, you need to eat an orange to get your vitamin C balance again. I'm not sure what it is with cannabis, but you want to be able to balance it too. So you know, always cleanse your palate. You know, if you can't drink water, you can always find leaves from some bush to want to leave. There's no bush and you're not nearby. Well, guess what? You got some right in your hand. It's cannabis. You know, just chew on that. It's dried, but it's better than not. You know, it's raw. It's better than not chewing on it. I think. You know, so, because you want to be able to, you know, make sure that your your mouth is no longer dry. So, all right. Any questions or comments? We got the number ten within the hour. So. So, in in regards to the vape pens. Yeah. So um, we've been told at other classes by other teachers that um, the PEG, the polyethylene glycol, that is sometimes added is very harmful. And in some medical literature, it's actually suggesting that people are developing popcorn lung or oh. things like that. So perhaps it's a, it would be, a, and you being such a purist, it's probably um, safer for patients to buy vape pens that do not contain PEG, polyethylene glycol. Mm -hmm. Do yourself a favor. I mean, it's called food grade, but I don't think it's ever been assessed for combustion. 
So it seems to be causing more damage than just yeah. regular smoke. Yeah. So when you're purchasing that, just be careful. Right. I mean, yeah. is it again? It's an additive that some, like in the vape oil? some of the growers are adding into the vape pens for some reason. I don't know if it's to. In, in the wax? And it's just in the vape pens. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, then I, I guess we're done. Very informative. Thank okay. you. Very. See, now you know yes. how to smoke pot. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even better. All these years it took you to learn, right? That's <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. That All was right. wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.